Welcome to my introduction to networking course, typically abbreviated ITN. This will be for the CCNA version 7 curriculum. Module 10 is about basic router configuration. So in this module, we're looking at how to configure basic router settings, looking at the interfaces, and setting up the default gateways on devices. So let's jump right on in, configuring the initial router settings. Just like a switch, we uh, jump in, we configure a host name from the global configuration. You'll notice that will be the device name and it will have config in brackets. From there, we will be typing in host name space, whatever the name you want it to be. If we want to enable a password, this is what secures the privilege exec mode. That is created by the enable section. What you would do is enable secret and then put whatever password you want. If we want to secure the user exec mode when we console in or if we're using a virtual terminal, we would then set up either a line console zero or a line VTY. VTY are the virtual terminals. And from there, you'd be setting a password using the password space, whatever the password you want it to be. And then you also want to say, when do you want it to prompt the user? And we want the users to be prompted at login. So the second line would be login. With a line VTY, you can also have uh, specific inputs that are required. You can do a secure shell SSH or you can allow Telnet or both. Keep in mind, Telnet, everything is still plain text. SSH, everything is encrypted, but additional setup is needed when we're doing SSH. With the enable and the password, you can actually set an enable password without using secret. However, secret actually hashes the password. You'll notice with the line connection, line console and line VTY, both the passwords are using this a plain text password. We can encrypt the password by enabling the service for password encryption. To do that, we type service password encryption. That will encrypt our passwords. Lastly, we need to set a banner. A banner is going to be a message that will be displayed when the user logs in. You do that by typing banner, MOTD, that is short for message of the day, a special character, write the message, and you have to end with the same special character. You cannot use different starting and ending different special characters. They have to be the same. So how does that look in practice? Here we have a host name, R1. We have a, a password of class. For our line passwords, we have a password of Cisco. Those will all be plain text except for the enable password until we turn on the services that encrypt our passwords. And then lastly, we have our banner message. And to make sure we understand this, we have a packet tracer lab. Moving on, how do we configure the interfaces? Routers and switches have multiple interfaces. So first of all, we need to know what they are. You could do a show IP interface brief, and that will show us the interfaces. That has to be done at the privilege exec mode, just the pound sign. Show IP interface brief will give you all of the interfaces. Once you know how many interfaces you have, you can configure those interfaces. You configure the interface by doing interface, the type and number of the interface. You can list a description if you'd like. You have the ability to give it an IPv4 and or an IPv6 address. 
and you should turn on the interface with a no shutdown. A shutdown command turns off the interface. No shutdown activates the interface. So in real practice, if we are programming the GIG000 interface, that would be the gigabit interface on the LAN side. That is how we would do it. We would give the IP address. We should give a description so we know what it is and we should turn it on. In this example, we're also enabling an IPv6 address. If we wanted to configure the gigabit 001 interface, we could do that as well. That is the link between R1 and R2, hence the description. We give it an IP address, we give it an IPv6 address, and we also say no shutdown to turn it on. So how do we verify these interfaces are up and running? Show IP interface brief. As long as the OK is yes and the status is yes or up, we are good. If the status is set to administratively down, that means that we didn't issue the no shutdown command. If the protocol is down, but the status is not administratively down, it is typically a layer one issue, a physical networking issue. If you want to look at the IPv6 version, you would do a show IPv6 interface brief, and that will give you the IPv6 equivalent of the interface brief communication. All right, so how do we look at certain commands? Show commands specifically. If we're looking at interfaces, show IP interface brief is going to be the most common. If we're looking at routing information, it'll be show IP route. We could look at detailed information by looking at show interfaces or show IP interfaces. Those will give us very specific statistics on those interfaces. All of these have a IPv6 equivalent command as well. So going back, here's how we would do our show IP interface brief. Again, it is important to realize these are our basic show commands for our verification for interfaces. If we are doing a route, if we're looking for routing information, show IP route, we will actually show better breakdowns of these tables in a later lecture. But this is how a routing table looks. This is what the router will use to make the de routing decisions. It will use this table to figure out how to forward packets appropriately. Show interfaces. You can show all interfaces or you can be specific on one interface. This will give you a detailed breakdown of that interface. The MAC address, the IP address, the NTU the reliability, the transmit and receive load, if there is ARP information, if there's anything being queried, if there's anything being overloaded, this is what's going to tell you. Show IP interface will also give you the uh, interface if it's up, if the blind protocol is up, this will give you more detailed on specific functionality. Notice, this does not give you reliability or transmit and receive loads. So show interface will give you transmit and receive loads. Show IP interface will give you specific on protocol functionality. Again, there's IP equivalent for IPv6. Show IPv6 interface will show you if it's up, if it's down, and if there's any multicast groups associated with it, and then the rest will be protocols. Moving on, how do we configure an IPv4 default gateway? Remember, the default gateway is the exit out of our LAN. So here we have two interfaces on the router. GIG000 and GIG001. If we actually want two different networks, we could do that. One network on GIG00, 
one network on gig 001. And to communicate between these two networks, it has to go to a layer three device. The layer three device is going to be our router. And again, the default gateway is our exit point for our network. Again, it's going to be the router. Switches must have a default gateway if they're going to be remotely managed at all. The switches should be able to pass frames to the router, assuming the end device is actually sending it to a remote host. The switch should also have a default gateway, just in case the switch is not sure how to forward it on. How do we configure an IP default gateway on a switch? From the global configuration, we issue a IP default gateway command, and that is IP default gateway space, the IP address of the gateway. For whatever reason, we have a bug in our PowerPoints that list the graphic not being completed as of yet. We do have a packet tracer on looking at router information, configuring the router, and verifying the configuration. We also have another packet tracer at looking at verifying network documentation, implementing solutions, and testing and verifying certain problems looking at the default gateway. And that is it for this chapter. There are videos if you wish to view them in Netacad. Overall, we also do have another lab looking at basic device configuration, both a router and a switch. We also have a basic uh, lab setting up again, switch and a router, setting up basic uh, device functionality, host name, banner, enable things of that nature. All right, so summary, what did we learn? We looked at how to navigate between user and exec mode and global configuration mode. We looked at basic configuration, how to set a host name, how to set an enable password, how to set line passwords, how to set a banner. We also looked at how to set interfaces, basic configuration for interfaces, and how to turn them on. Again, we turn them on with a no shutdown command. We also looked at how to set a default gateway and the purpose of a default gateway. Any questions or concerns, please reach out. Thank you.